There's people that get fatigued in the morning and there's people that get fatigued in the afternoon. I tend to fall into the afternoon category. And a lot of times it's, we want to look at this like big picture, like why are we fatigued? What's going on? But a lot of times it is something relatively short term. Like it explains why some days we're fatigued and some days we're not, even if there's not a lot of other variables. A lack of specific nutrients can make you feel fatigued really fast. Okay, a lot of times we look at things big picture and we're like, why am I getting fatigued? It's this going on, it's that going on. But sometimes it's really granular and simple to change with the diet. Let's jump into the first one right out the gate. It's one that's talked about a lot, so I hate even talking about it, but it's B12. The reason I mentioned B12 is because it's the lowest hanging fruit. If you have an issue with fatigue and adding in B12 fixes it, problem solved. And it's just such low hanging fruit because it just is so unbelievably common, I would be doing a disservice to not mention it. Now, it's exceptionally important if you're someone that eats carbohydrates. It's less important for people that maybe don't eat as many carbs because B12 is extra critical when it comes down to carb metabolism. But by and large, it's a water soluble vitamin that gets depleted really quick. So it's one of those things where you can be deficient within a couple of days and feel the impact. It's something that you can course correct and pretty much feel the positive impact almost immediately. So it's involved in red blood cell formation. So basically without B12, you lack the amino acid formation that prevents the DNA synthesis, which ultimately leads to red blood cell apoptosis where the red blood cells can die and they don't form well, which means then your hemoglobin goes down and you don't get oxygen to the cells. But again, it's water soluble. You can fix it quick. My favorite sources, salmon. People don't talk about salmon as a B12 source, but it's a huge one, okay? Eggs, another huge one. My personal favorite, nutritional yeast, because I can add it on anything and it's super rich in B12. This next one has a huge caveat. So please, please, please do not skip over it when I mention that it's iron. That would be cliche. That would be such a simple general thing to say, oh, you need iron. The bottom line is that, yeah, iron is super, super, super important for hemoglobin, for oxygen transport. Without iron, we can't build hemoglobin. Okay, and there's studies to back it up. There's a study that was published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal, took a look at women that were low in iron, and they gave them either an iron supplement or a placebo supplement, and it found that they had about a 47% improvement in fatigue with the iron supplement, but they also had a 28.8% improvement with the placebo. So that raises some red flags for me. I'm like, well, clearly the placebo effect was powerful because even the people that received the placebo pill had improvements in fatigue. That's what makes fatigue really hard to address because a lot of it is so subjective and starts up here. Now here's what frustrates me about iron. Everyone is so quick to say, oh, you're anemic, you need iron. Sometimes adding iron to the mix is the last thing you want to do. I am not someone that thinks we should willy nilly be taking iron supplements because I am a firm believer that the symptoms of anemia are not just a result of anemia. They're a result of iron that is there present, but not performing its tasks the way that it should. Remember iron takes up a lot of oxygen. It's very oxidative. So when we have a lot of iron floating around, it steals oxygen from other components. So extra iron can cause a big problem too. Here's what's important. Copper actually manages iron. Copper is like the person riding the horse of iron. Okay, without copper, iron is going to go do everything that it wants to do and it's going to steal oxygen from everything and it's going to come with the iron show. It's a very narcissistic mineral. So copper controls the iron levels within our body, but it also controls the oxygen uptake of iron. So it's like iron, hey, you shouldn't be taking that oxygen. That belongs to Bob. Give it back. It also helps convert the ferric state of iron into the ferrous state. Okay, so a lot of times if you see that your blood levels of iron are low, it doesn't mean that you need more iron. It might mean that you need more copper to unlock the ferric state iron into the ferrous available state of iron. So the symptoms of anemia can be purely literally being anemic and not having enough iron, or it can be iron not doing its job properly. So to quickly just add more iron into a situation where there's not enough copper to do the job in the first place, just sends you further down this whole rabbit hole of problems. Now, so what I really recommend with this is not to say, okay, let's start with copper. It's get your iron from bioavailable sources. I'm not saying don't eat more iron. I'm saying eat the red meat that has the iron in it. Eat the pumpkin seeds, eat the dark chocolate of course without the sugar, the things that have the natural amounts of iron in it that are going to come with the stabilizing minerals as well. Okay. So try to balance out your diet with that. Don't add iron supplementation in. 
Honestly, if you're really questioning it and you're not vegan, you're not vegetarian, try adding a little bit of red meat each day and see if that improves. I know it sounds crazy. It probably goes against the grain of a lot of people's thoughts, but it might improve. Even just having a little bit of like beef jerky or like a chomp stick or like a beef stick could be enough to just get you where you need to go and give you the supporting minerals as well. I put a link down below for Thrive Market where you can get chomp sticks, you can get like a ton of different beef jerkies, salmon jerkies, all kinds of things, whatever you want. It's an online grocery store. That's a 30% off discount link. Definitely recommend you check them out. So you can sort by diet type, but you can sort by like beef sticks. You can sort by meat snacks. So any kind of thing where you're like, I need to get my red meat intake up or I need to get my meat intake up to kind of get these vitamins up, but I don't necessarily want to just go get a burger. I need something on the go. They've got so many options, but that link saves you 30% off your whole grocery order. So get that stuff, get some other snacks, but they also have like meat and seafood, like frozen meat and seafood. So you could literally do pretty much your whole grocery shopping with the exception of produce through Thrive Market and save 30% off with that link. Plus you get a $50 free gift. They've been on my channel for a long time. I know I tout them a lot, but I'm telling you for ease, convenience, and cost, it just makes sense. So that link is down below, first line of the description. This next one is super simple, and it's probably the next lowest hanging fruit next to B12. Okay, it's gonna be sodium. When people get fatigued, they just start thinking everything else under the sun, but they forget that salt is so important. We are electrical creatures. We have an electrical system and that is required for the electrical impulses that make our body move. So our body is dictated, our movement is dictated by these rises and falls in voltage. And with sodium being low, you're gonna draw so much extra water into a cell that you're going to end up having this like cattywampus state of electrolytes where the voltage can't really do what it's supposed to do. So you're not getting the signal. That's a quick thing to fix. A little electrolyte packet here, maybe a little bit of salt in your water. Have you ever noticed those situations where you're really tired, you have a little bit of salt and you're like, whoa, I feel good again. So it's not like something is inherently wrong with you. These are just things that are devoid in a lot of our natural food. Not saying salt is not around. There's a lot of salt in food, but these other things I'm talking about. Moving on to the next one, choline. Now choline, there's a lot of speculation surrounding choline. Choline is one of these things that really does help with uh, like neurotransmitter function and just nerve function in the first place. We produce sort of a choline in the body that helps produce acetylcholine. It's called phosphatidylcholine. It's produced in the liver, but we don't produce that much. The rest we have to get from the diet. So when we eat things like eggs that are rich in choline, or we eat things like beef liver, yep, Liver King's right about that one thing, we get a lot of choline, but what happens is the enzymes in our gut when they go to break the food down, they extricate that dietary choline. So they extricate the free choline and that free choline circulates in the bloodstream and can provide a pretty immediate fuel source. And what is not an immediate fuel source, I should say literal fuel, but potential fuel helper, the rest can go to the liver and get stored. So we even store some of that choline in the liver for later. This is really interesting because research is starting to show that choline can actually help fat transport out of the liver. So fats coming out of the liver, being able to help us have more fuel to use, fat to use as fuel. But there's even some preliminary evidence that it might be good for a fatty liver, it might help sort of get some of that fat out of the liver, hugely important. But then it's also utilized by our nerve cells. And when we exercise and move our muscles, our muscles produce this acetylcholine, which sort of acts as a neurotransmitter to help the nerves do their job properly, contract the muscles. So the more active you are, the more you'll deplete choline because you don't have the makings to produce it that fast. So eggs and liver, just try adding that in. Literally, if you want the choline breakfast, have a little bit of chopped liver in your eggs because you either like liver or you hate liver. Next one is one that we think of as only something that's good for inflammation or the immune system. That's vitamin C. But there was a study that was published in the Nutrition Journal. It took a look at a rather large sample size, 141 people, gave them 10 grams of IV vitamin C or placebo IV. Okay, those that got the vitamin C saw a tremendous improvement in their fatigue. Why is this the case? Well, it happens that vitamin C is very much so required for beta oxidation. It's required for the formation and the creation of what is called carnitine. Carnitine is a transport vehicle that takes fat into the mitochondria. If you're deficient in carnitine, fat doesn't get into the powerhouse of the cell and you don't process fat. So vitamin C, you could make a leap and say, potentially helps support 
fat utilization too. This all has to do with the dioxygenase enzyme that actually creates carnitine. So vitamin C is involved in this enzymatic process. And if vitamin C is not around or is low, and again, it's water soluble, so it's easy to become quickly deficient in the interim, then yeah, you can notice that. And a bolus of vitamin C, whether from an IV injection or from food or from even like supplementation form, might actually provide you that extra little kick that you need to improve fatty acid metabolism, fatty acid oxidation. So very, very interesting. So just to recap, first step, try B12. Try getting B12 in. Try it with supplements, but more importantly, try it with food. Next step, simple low-hanging fruit, sodium. Okay, if the B12 doesn't help, try the sodium. And then the next step after that is going to be try to mess around with the iron-containing foods, okay? Like a little bit more meat, a little bit more red meat, maybe a little bit more pumpkin seeds, dark chocolate that's unsweetened, things like that. Then the next step after that is going to be choline, because that's an easy thing to add in with your diet. Don't go supplement form, go diet. And lastly, maybe supplement with like three or four grams of vitamin C. Do a decent amount and see if it actually moves the needle. I'll see you tomorrow.